Hey guys, Sherry here from No Fucks Given Crew. How's it going? So this is going to be a twin, or sorry, a Divine Feminine reading. Oh my gosh, yes. A uh, Divine Feminine reading for October the 4th until the 11th. Um, so I'm going to be using my cards, uh, doing the crystal ball reading. So there's going to be a 5x5 five five grid. Uh, distant past, recent past, near, or sorry, present, near future, and final outcome. Four cornerstone cards, which represent the main energy of the reading, and then one middle card, which is zero point, which is the main message from the universe. All right, so let's begin. So first corner, cornerstone card, distant past, position, sun, divine feminine. This is beautiful. This is the most um, positive card, or card in the deck the most positive major arcana as well. So this is, you know, it is a brand new beginning. It's illumination. It's empowerment. It's it's a um, brand new beginning, uh, returning to an innocent state of mind. Incredible. All right. So there's been this major illumination in the past for the feminine. Wow. Uh, the base chakra. Um, so this is where it's a feeling of safety and security. It's a number one as well. So we have an 11. Um, but this is a, a lower chakra, so it's a lower vibration, right? So what I'm feeling here is insecurity. Um, now, it's right beside the sun, though. So maybe that she discovers this ultimate um, truth within herself, that safety comes from within, you know, there's nothing out there in the external world that can give her safety. Um, so it's like this eternal safety net, in a way. Well, let's see what the rest of the cards show. Next, Divine Masculine, are you kidding? Okay, so the sun is masculine energy, the moon is feminine. The moon showed up on the in the masculine reading, and here we have the sun in the feminine. So um, there was a lot of fire on the masculine side. So there's a sense that um, there's this empowerment that's happening within the masculine, but also the divine feminine was bringing um, the divine masculine in as a, a foundation. And the masculine was bringing in the Queen of Wands, which actually showed up in his reading. So there's a mirroring synchronicity that's happening here. Um, and we can see that again, that mirroring taking place in the two separate readings, as well as the Twin Flame. So anyway, let me carry on. The Divine Masculine, the Emperor, is the Sun. Okay, so very extroverted very powerful leadership protective um, qualities but really you know there's a sense that the feminine knows who her masculine is she's met him in the past hold on <coughs> a little tickle there um, but from this power there's this insecurity that is happening next is the ace of wands so uh, this is a brand new beginning 3D reality. It's an, a gift from the universe. So it's a windfall card, right? So it's a new beginning 3D. Seed is planted. So it's an opposite energy of the base chakra. This is insecurity. This is having, you know, feeling like you have something to move forward with, right? It's an abundance. And so maybe the masculine was offered something in the past or is offering the feminine oh my god my throat is so ticklish right now hold on okay so my throat was ticklish in the masculine reading so there's a sense of you know that there was communication cards that kept on showing up so maybe the feminine's waiting for communication or the masculine's waiting for a decision from the feminine whether or not to take that offer um, but wow, you know, this is grounded energy that I see for sure, especially with the masculine. The masculine is a foundation. The Ace of Pentacles is that intention set, but the base chakra is feeling insecure. Like, um, you don't really have ground to stand on. Uh, 
so it's a back and forth energy here. So let's carry on. So the final cornerstone card is Five of Pentacles. So this is feeling left out in the cold, disconnected, uh, feeling alone, feeling like you have no help. So it's a cornerstone card. So this is saying that the feminine felt disconnected from this. At one time she felt this love, this happiness, this joy enter her life, but it, instead of making her feel whole and powerful, it led to a sense of disconnect and insecurity, probably, you know, feeling insecure about herself because the feminine had um, a card that reflected that, that she wasn't looking after herself because maybe she didn't feel she was good enough. All right, she met her divine masculine. Maybe she feels she doesn't measure up. I was getting that kind of energy from the masculine too as well, so mirroring. All right, so recent past position, eight of wands again. So there was some form of communication that took place in the past. This card showed up three times now in the past. So this card is also Cupid's arrows. It's reaching for the stars for your highest goals and having that manifested into your reality. So beautiful underneath that sun card right there. There is some manifestation. There is movement. There is um, success flowing towards you. So, although she felt, you know, maybe this this wasn't the right choice or whatever, you know, there's this um, self-destructive energy here because she's afraid, right? Almost like a runner feeling to it. Ultimately, it brings her to um, a feeling of success with the Eight of Wands. Okay, so this is also accelerated motion, so it's a raising of the vibration once again. Three of Swords, heartbreak, pain, right below that base chakra, so that insecurity caused her to probably lash out or refuse or run from that offer from the masculine. And in the recent past, it caused her some deep pain heartbreak you know maybe she tried to reach out you know maybe there's this um, you know regret uh, so the feminine felt the deep, deep pain in her heart as a result of lashing out is what I'm feeling here next there you go five of swords lashing out you send out negative vibrations into the universe, and that's what's going to return to you. Um, so it could have been some nasty texting or nasty conversation, right? So the feminine uh, shown um, a pain, you know, um, a negative side to her herself. Um, and ultimately, she walks away from that energy, right? The twin flame reading really reflected this. For sure. Next, Nine of Pentacles. So this is um, self-love, ultimate self-love. Um, so this is an arrival card, feeling like you, you're arriving, okay? So this is financial freedom, independence. Uh, the fruit is ready to drop from the branches. So it's harvest. The nine plus the ace there is a ten, okay? So the seed that was in, was planted in in the past is actually growing there's fruit that is dropping from the branches you know but the feminine is in uh was in a self-destructive mode um or it could mean that the feminine needed to do some clearing herself release some people that were negative that were causing her heartbreak and she gained her freedom as a result of it Right, with the Five of Pentacles. King of Pentacles. Earth sign. So um, the Queen of Pentacles showed up in the masculine's past position. So there could be um, physical contact for some people, you know, for some twins. There could have been some uh, union that took place in the 3D, um, especially with the 
nine of pentacles right beside the king of pentacles right there's a lot of independence here um so the king of pentacles is somebody who is grounded successful um who doesn't place a lot of importance on the 3d reality but instead enjoys being surrounded by friends and family so um the feminine you guys may have grown in to the king of pentacles yourself you could be taking on this energy but i'm i'm sensing that there was some fear maybe there's some communication of meeting up in the 3d and the, the feminine chickened out do you know what i mean or lashed out um she felt maybe she cut the cord or something like that um um, but she did it out of, you know, self-preservation is what I'm seeing here. Okay, next is a present position, nice, temperance. So this is being in the now, being in the moment, and it's also having um, balance in all areas of your life, emotionally, spiritually, physically, and mentally. Okay, so she's seeking balance. Um, but I, I feel that you are attaining that because you are being represented as temperance, patient, right? Being um, fully aware in, in this moment. Or maybe you're being asked to return to the sun, return to the higher vibration. Don't be pulled back into that negative space. Next, two of pentacles. Yeah. Um, so the two here is coming below the base chakra, right, that insecurity. So from that insecurity, the seed is planted and it grows into the two of pentacles and it starts to change the 3D reality. Um, so I see growth here and I see, um, I see the feminine becoming flexible, uh, bending with the wind instead of fighting it right and I can see that with the patience or temperance card there um, letting go of her insecurities um, letting go of the guilt of lashing out perhaps so this is zero point card the chariot so movement forward taking control of your life grabbing those reins and directing your energy towards that thing that you desire. So it's it's kind of opposite energy of the temperance. Um, so spirit wants you to stop swaying in the wind and um, move forward once and for all. And it's below the divine masculine, five of swords, right? So whatever conflict you keep replaying in your mind, it's not what you think it is. So stop letting these minor petty arguments get the better of you, right? So Spirit is asking you to get control of your life and pursue those things that make you happy. Get back on that that horse, you know, find that momentum again. Start moving forward again. But, you know, you're coming from a balanced space. These two cards are all about balance, right? And you need to have balance if you're going to maneuver that surfboard through the vortex. Page of Swords. So this is very important communication, open, honest communication, air energy. So mental clarity. So the feminine may be desiring to communicate. <clears throat> yep, because my throat just got scratchy just now. All right, so both desire communication. And the foundation card was communication. All right, message in a bottle. So whether or not that comes in is remains to be seen, but there's a definite sense that this communication led to heartbreak and lashing out, and she needs to clear the air is what I see with this. Knight of Swords. So the Knight of Swords showed up as a cornerstone card for the masculine. So this is the page here. We have a Knight, which is movement forward. Again, movement 
that is very chaotic, very scattered, whereas the um, uh, chariot is very directed, controlled energy. So I think this is a warning for the feminine to get control over her herself, to rein in the knight of swords, right? Don't do anything dumb. Don't you know, get control of that windy, airy energy, right? Don't lash out. Don't let negative emotions to control you. Ultimately, if, you know, if you use your true divine masculine twin flame, he is in a space of unconditional love. And so whatever harm is done is done to yourself, right? You're causing your own heart to break. Nobody else is doing that to you. So, near future position, Queen of Swords. So, this card showed up in the masculine's present position uh, for the Divine Masculine reading. So, this is truthful, open, honest communication. It's kind of cool. Here we have a page, the knight, and then the queen. Very cool if the king shows up right beside her because that would be the ultimate communication exchange. So the Queen of Swords is somebody who has that mental clarity, right? That mental control, right? The, the page is just scattered thoughts. It's starting to, to make sense of those thoughts, right? And if you don't make sense of those thoughts right away, it could, you can act on impulse and it could lead you um, into self-destructive behavior. So the Queen of Swords is gaining control of your thoughts and expressing those thoughts but this is a mental or sorry this is an emotional detachment right so again be careful of the vibration and the energy that you send out into the universe right send out love cupid's arrows nine of swords so the Nine of Swords is anxiety, fear, stress, worry, guilt. So the feminine becomes consumed with her thoughts in the near future. And it could be, you know, lashing out. The, the Queen of Cups has cutting words, but she also sees through bullshit, right? So the, ed, the knife is double-edged. So um, whatever this... Thing is that occurred in the past is really weighing on her in the near future. Oh, you're kidding me, right? King of Swords. Oh my God. That's insane. King of Swords. Very cool. Very cool. Saurus. Very cool. It's r right below the Divine Masculine. Right? The Five of Swords was kind of directed at him. Get control of yourself, because um, there's a sense that the divine masculine is coming in as a king of swords in the future, and so there is a resolution or a very important communication that occurs here. Very open and honest communication, but it requires both the divine feminine and masculine to put aside their fears, let go of the past, right? Um, you know, it's like she's carrying a lot of guilt around with her. Uh, and it could be vice versa, either way. The masculine could be coming in on a surfboard to communicate. Uh, but the feminine needs to be careful of this energy, cutting words, a lot of swords being wielded here. In the past, it caused pain. All right, so there is a standoff here is what I see. That is insane. Page, knight, queen, king. This could all be the feminine energy, right? The, queen, the feminine could come into this ultimate mental control. Six of cups, beautiful. So the six of cups showed up as a final outcome for the divine masculine in the twin flame reading. Um, so there is reunion here okay so we have a king and a queen of the same suit so there's it's a shared energy now the six of cups is emotions right so 
uh, you know, it's just somebody from the, the past coming back, somebody from childhood, even a previous life, but it's pure innocent love. Now, it could be a karmic partner, um, a c communication with a karmic partner about kids. Um, but no, I feel it's more of a reunion of the heart. Ultimately, you, they overcome their fear and embrace each other as children, right? Not as these adults who have cutting words. Five of Cups. So this card was in the masculine's present position and what he was bringing into the union. Five of Cups, deep pain, sorrow, heartbreak. But what I'm feeling here is a healing energy, right? It's like that that hug ultimately opens both of you up. And it's like a release, this flood of emotions. You know, that finally that void has been, you know, closed. Final row, cornerstone card, ten of cups, awesome. Sun card. Number one, the Ten of Cups reduces to a one. So this is a completion, a happily ever after. Congratulations. So peace and harmony, bliss, is the cornerstone card. Next, Nine of Wands, the Wounded Warrior. So we have two nines here, which represent nearing the end of a cycle, right? Um, the Nine of Pentacles also. So the feminine is on the cusp of um, completing a cycle. Um, but the Ten is completion. Okay, so the Nine of Wands is the wounded warrior. So you can see those battle scars, definitely, right? Insecurity, heartbreak, pulled in different directions. Um, anxiety, guilt, right? So the wounded warrior holds all of that. Um, so this is a feeling of wanting to give up, throw in the towel, right? But at the heart, or at the core of who you are, you ha there's this little Buddha in there, right? So this is driving the feminine forward. So this represents her journey, her spiritual journey, and the completion of that, which ultimately leads to the heart unconditional love nice are you kidding that's awesome the lover's card passion desire um, so love ignited within you know twin flames but this is a longing card so it could mean that the masculine brings passion right and it's like an explosive energy of love and and um, feeling of arrival, maybe even. Okay, next. Four Swords. So that this is healing. This is retreating. So we can see the nine there, you know, desiring that that loving connection, that passion, and so it may require the feminine just to find some stillness to heal herself. So this is healing the heart, making decisions, right? So the masculine may come back into her life. They may have communication that could, you know, bring some realizations to her that causes heartbreak or pain, what have you. Um, something does need to be healed. Not a big deal that I'm seeing here. Not at all. It's like um, a final moment of contemplation. And you saw that energy in the, the Twin Flame reading. Final Cornerstone card. The Knight of Pentacles. So this is Earth energy, but this is arrival, right? You're about to take that step off the um, tight wire rope. So this is um, the slowest moving knight, but he always arrives at his destination. His movements are very calculated, strategic. So there's a sense that he's about to arrive, okay? So as a final outcome, the feminine, although is feeling this unconditional love, 
um, in her heart, um, she feels, you know, still this burden, this feeling of anxiety, stress, worry, right? He caused me heartbreak in the past. I did this, I did that. But ultimately, the feminine comes to clarity. Communication happens, um, but your reaction to it could cause you to retreat. You know, it's that a final look at yourself in the mirror, right? And then an arrival is what I see here. All right, so um, I think I'm going to use the call it Baron Reed Wisdom of the Oracle for a final message from the universe. Mending. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm seeing here, right? Um, she, she needs to heal her heart. You see the Three of Swords. And it may be something that she did. She may have lashed out. And here we say, you know, I'm sorry I did that to you. You know, I mean, honest, open. I feel really bad about how I handled myself in the past. Do you know what I mean? So, not only healing that wound within yourself, the wounded warrior, through this love and embrace, right? It's, there's a sense that she she arrives at this deep understanding, right? She she finally gets it. So, number fifty-two. <clears throat> I think this is last card. Yes, it is. So it's the last card in this deck. Um, so mending, forgiveness, making amends, healing after arguments. There you go, healing after arguments, right? That's what it feels like. There's this cutting, cutting words, unemotional. And it was charged, it was, you know, fear-based. Okay, so... I'm going to read the oracle message as well as the relationship message. I don't know why I'm being guided to do it. Okay, so each time we are hurt and allow the hurt to pass through us without understanding and integration, we accumulate it unwanted burden. This keeps us chained in the very things we need to heal. The pain, the memories, the echoes of resentment and arguments that we rehearse over and over. Now is the time for mending rifts, healing wounds, and letting go of old hurts in order to reclaim our power. Now is the time to forgive, to release, to make peace, and make amends to others to set yourself free. The relationship message. You've come to a place where forgiveness is necessary if you are to move forward. Separate or together, you and another person are still experiencing the effects of hurt. This is impacting everything you do, even if you are not aware of it. The energy needs to clear. What must you do to bridge the gap? Closing your heart is not the answer. You have the power to heal this wound. Ask yourself, what would love do? Only good will come of forgiveness and honest redress. So ask the question, what would love do, right? And, and for the Twin Flame reading, was ask the question, why? So there's that deep introspection. Why did that happen? Why did I react the way I did? Right, and so there's the clarity, communication, and healing for sure. All right, so please leave a um, you know, comment below. I love your comments, they help me um, direct the energy in the readings. Um, and also, uh, thank you for liking and sharing. And please subscribe, show the love. All right, love you guys. Cheers.